By March 1945, Japan was a nation isolated and under siege. Her once mighty empire had now been reduced to a few unimportant island strongholds. After a long and bitter campaign of reconquest, the Americans were preparing to assault the island of Okinawa, a mere 340 miles from mainland Japan. Its capture was vital to secure airfields and deep water ports necessary for the inevitable invasion of Japan itself. Set for April 1st, the American land elements would comprise the 10th Army of six divisions, four Army and two Marine, totaling 100,000 men under General Buckner. This striking force would be supported by the formidable U.S. 5th Fleet commanded by Admiral Spruance. This large armada consisted 11 fleet, 7 light and 22 escort carriers with 18 battleships, 27 heavy cruisers and 177 destroyers. Okinawa itself was 60 miles long and at points only 2 and 18 miles wide. The island was also home to 450,000 Japanese civilians and would be defended by the 130,000 strong Japanese 32nd Army commanded by General Mitsuro Ushijima. Four American divisions landed unopposed at Higuchi Bay on the western side of the island and within six hours the 7th Infantry and 1st Marines had a cut across the island cutting it in two. The 6th Marines marched north brushing aside local militias while the 96th Infantry captured the town of Cuba and then proceeded south. The quick Allied advances were mainly due in part that Mitsuro's plan was not to resist the American landings, but to concentrate the bulk of his forces at the southern end of the island along a formidable defensive position known as the Shuri Line. Most of the northern half of the island was occupied by the 1st and 6th Marines with little opposition. However, when the American 7th and 96th Infantry reached the Japanese southern defenses, they suffered heavy casualties despite enjoying total air supremacy and the support of hundreds of large caliber naval guns. The battle for the Shuri Line would continue for the next month until the Japanese 32nd Army began to run out of food, medicine and ammunition, thus forcing Ushijima to launch a series of suicidal Banzai infantry charges against the Americans rather than surrender. This would result in horrendous Japanese casualties, virtually destroying the entire army. The supporting naval forces also had a fierce battle of their own to fight, as hundreds of Japanese kamikaze suicide aircraft launched repeated waves of attacks with the sole purpose of ramming their aircraft into Allied ships to severely damage or sink them. For the loss of 300 Japanese aircraft and their pilots, the U.S. and British naval forces suffered 36 ships sunk and 368 severely damaged, with 4,900 sailors killed and 4,800 wounded. The Japanese Imperial Navy also participated in the battle for Okinawa, sending the battleship Yamato, displacing 73,000 tons and armed with nine 18.1-inch main guns, which were the largest ever mounted on a warship, on what amounted to a suicide mission with only enough fuel to reach the island and disrupt the American landings. However, the Yamato was spotted on April 7th and attacked by 280 dive bombers and torpedo planes. Within hours, she had been struck by 12 bombs and 19 torpedoes, sending her to the bottom with 2,498 of her crew. In stark contrast, the Americans lost only 10 aircraft and 12 airmen. Mopping up operations against small but determined pockets of Japanese resistance would continue for the next three months until on July 2nd the battle was declared over. Casualties suffered on both sides was extensive. 120,000 Japanese were killed while U.S. losses numbered 12,500 dead and 35,000 wounded. As a rehearsal for the inevitable invasion of Japan itself, these casualty figures were too horrific for the U.S. government to contemplate. 
which in the end strongly supported their decision for using the atom bomb to bring the war to an end.